Episode three picks up right where episode two left off with Cassie on the street being stalked unknowingly by Miranda. She's on the phone with Annie and she's telling her Miranda's last name and she's got Google alerts set up for Miranda Croft, but also Alex Sokolov and Unisphere, which Annie points out would be a pretty big red flag for anybody who searches her search history. Annie tells Cassie that she will talk to Sabrina. Hopefully Sabrina will come clean and tell the FBI what she told Cassie. But in the meantime, go live your life. And hopefully by the time that Cassie gets back from Rome, this will all be cleared up. Miranda ends up losing Cassie when Cassie hops in a cab to go home. The next day, Cassie heads to work where she's on the trip to Rome along with Megan. And Megan asks her if she's going to make that announcement that you got to put away all your electronic devices. But Cassie points out, hey, I'm mad at you. And this all has to do with the fact that Megan had the audacity to reach out to Cassie, telling her that the FBI was looking into her. I mean, the nerve. When she lands in Rome, she gets a Google alert about Alex's memorial service, which is going to be held at his family's place in Westchester, New York. And she goes into that headspace with the dead Alex and is telling him how bad she feels, but he says, I don't worry about it, people have to grieve. When all of the flight attendants get to the hotel, Shane wants Cassie to go out, but Cassie doesn't want to. And Shane definitely doesn't like this new Cassie who stays in. But Cassie actually lied. She goes to a restaurant where there's a bartender slash waiter who she usually hooks up with when she's in Rome. Normally, she reaches out to this guy beforehand so they could hook up, but this time she just did a drop-in. She's kind of looking more for the friend part of Friends with Benefits and not really the benefits part. But this just so happens to be the restaurant where Megan went for dinner that night, and Megan is drunk. Megan kind of interrupts Cassie in this guy's conversation, and he realizes it, so he goes and does his job, and Megan comes clean with Cassie that she doesn't have a lot of friends, and she doesn't want Cassie mad at her. She promises that she won't continue to talk to the FBI about Cassie, and she won't continue to bother her with phone calls. Cassie tells her that it's okay, don't worry about it, but Megan's drunk and somewhat inconsolable and admits to Cassie that it's just she's been keeping so many secrets that it's just good to talk to somebody. Cassie tries to find out what exactly she meant by keeping secrets, but Megan just continues to drink. And when they're ready to wrap up the night, the guy from the restaurant ends up walking a drunk Megan and Cassie back to their hotel room to make sure they get home safely. Cassie heads into her hotel room where she's remembering a conversation that she had with Alex the night that he died about how controlling his mother was. And conversely, how much his mother hated his last girlfriend. She gets home and calls up Annie, who... While she was gone, was trying to get Sabrina to give up the goods, but Sabrina was acting like she never once met with Cassie. And even though Annie can tell that she's lying and kind of threatens her, saying, it's not smart to lie to me, Sabrina sticks to her story. She never talked to Cassie. So when Cassie gets home, she calls up Annie, who doesn't answer, because she's trying to get an update on the whole Miranda situation, only to find that her apartment has been broken into. Only, it doesn't really look like they took anything. It just more looks like they were looking for something. She's kind of freaked out, and Annie isn't answering her call, so she heads on over to Annie's apartment, where, to her surprise, there's a naked guy taking a shower. And this guy's name is Max, and he's apparently Annie's boyfriend. Although, Cassie says that Annie doesn't have a boyfriend. She's never heard of a Max, even though Max has clearly heard of Cassie. Apparently, Annie has this whole thing about labels, but it does seem like Max and her are a thing after she represented Max. He was involved in extortion, he gets good at hacking computers, it's a whole thing. But he's got good hair and a six pack, so I get it. Now when Cassie arrived, Annie wasn't there, but when she shows up, Cassie confronts her about the whole, you know, boyfriend situation, and Annie once again says, I don't have a boyfriend, right in front of Max. You know, labels. She sits down with Cassie and tells her that when she arrived home, her door was open, and she's wondering if it could have been Miranda. She wants to know if Annie has an update on Sabrina, and unfortunately, Annie tells her that Sabrina said that she never met with her. And on top of it, she claims that she's never heard of anyone named Miranda. So Annie calls up the FBI to find out if they've spoken to Sabrina about Miranda. And they claim that they had spoken to Sabrina, but she never brought up anyone named Miranda. And it's becoming clear that everybody thinks that Cassie has just made up Miranda. Annie calls up another source in the FBI to find out what the FBI might have on Cassie to find out that Bangkok police has located the murder weapon, which was that broken bottle that Cassie was cleaning up the day she found Alex. They're going to reconstruct it and see if they pull prints. And if they do, they're going to find Cassie's fingerprints on it. Cassie's kind of freaking out a little bit over this. And Annie, who suddenly looks very uncomfortable, says, I'll continue to dig into Miranda and Unisphere, but don't worry about it. It's going to be fine although she's not exactly convincing. Now, it's become clear to Cassie that no one believes her that Miranda exists, and she goes into that headspace with the dead Alex and starts talking to him that if he had dated Miranda, someone has to know that she exists. And that's when she remembers the conversation she had about Alex's mom hating his last girlfriend. And she knows exactly where to find Alex's mom. It's going to be at his memorial service. 
She doesn't want to go alone, so she convinces Shane to go with her. Although she's very sketchy on the details about whose memorial service this is. And right before they're about to leave, she gets a phone call from the guy that she hooked up with in the bar before she met with the FBI. He had put her number in his phone, like a G. And this guy's name is Buckley, and he wants to meet Cassie once again, but she says, I can't, I have a work training thing. Although they are not the only ones to go to this memorial service because the FBI agents are parked outside. And they see Cassie walk in, and that is a massive red flag. They're pretty convinced that Cassie is the killer. But when they get inside, Shane cannot believe that he was dragged to the memorial service of 3C. She lied to him because she figured that if she told him the truth, he wouldn't come. And he says, no, you were right. I'm leaving. I'm going to leave you here by yourself. Although he doesn't leave, he finds some waiter to hook up with. So Cassie is left all alone to wander around this memorial service and try to find Alex's mom. She goes into the headspace and is talking to dead Alex. And Alex brings up the point that if he actually did date Miranda, there's going to be plenty of people there that know her. So why are you bothering my mom at my memorial service? But she says, I'm not going to walk up to every single person and say, hey, do you know Miranda? I know your mom knows her. That's why I'm bothering her. The family gets everybody in a room and starts thanking everybody for showing up when Cassie's phone will not stop going off. It's interrupting the entire memorial service. Eventually, she has to take the call. She goes into the room and the call was from Annie because Annie had Max hack in a Unisphere. She could only find out so much about Alex Sokolov, and it was basically a squeaky clean image. Too clean, in fact. So Max hacked it. And it took some digging, but he found out that the Sokolovs actually own Unisphere. I mean, this information was hidden very, very deep. Now, he didn't find out anything about Miranda, but what he did find out was that the Sokolovs are laundering money for very scary people. Some of them are, in fact, Annie's clients. The kind of people you don't want to mess with. She tells Cassie that she needs to get the hell out of there immediately, but Cassie says, if I don't find Miranda, I'm never sleeping in my house again. So I need to find somebody that knows this woman to back my story up. Cassie starts downing champagne when she has a flashback to her childhood of herself at a memorial service. And Alex is there saying, oh my God, you're so young. But Cassie loses it on him saying, get out of my childhood memories. This isn't how this works. But at this memorial service, when she was a little girl, she snuck off to have a beer. Alex thinks it's a big deal, but Cassie does not. Cassie was caught trying to drink by Davey, and it gives you an indication of the drinking problem that she might have. But because of this memory, she starts to kind of hyperventilate a little bit and needs to get the hell out of there. But while doing so, she makes a fool of herself by knocking into one of the waiters who's walking around with sandwiches, completely making a scene. And while she's trying to get out of there, she's having more childhood memories from this memorial service. And dead Alex Sokolov is sitting there kind of judging her, because in this new one, it's the first time she had a hard alcohol. She found her father's flask and started downing it. She sort of kind of snaps out of it, and that's when she runs into Alex's mom. She approaches her and apologizes for doing so, but says, I have to ask you a question. It's about Alex's last girlfriend. And Alex's mom says, what about Fiona? And Fiona is a name that Cassie's never heard before. Cassie says, no, 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 I'm talking about Miranda Croft. And Alex's mom looks at her like she has eight heads and says, that's absurd. Alex never dated Miranda Croft. Where would you get such a ridiculous thought? Never mention that name to me again. And then she storms out. Cassie sees his mom head upstairs and decides to follow her. Where she overhears her on the phone saying that she was accosted by a strange woman asking about Miranda Croft. Whatever else is going on, I'm not going to let Victor or Miranda or anyone else at Lionfish use my son as a scapegoat. And then she hangs up. She looks at a guy who works for her and says, where are the lionfish files that Alex left here? And he tells her that he shredded them this morning. So now Cassie knows that she needs to get those shredded documents. But she was supposed to text Annie that she was okay. And Annie's freaking out a little bit, knowing what kind of business the Sokolovs are in. She does something that she's really not supposed to do. She contacts one of her clients, asking the client to tell the Sokolovs that Cassie Bowden is just a simple flight attendant who had a thing for Alex. She's harmless. She knows that she's probably going to get in big trouble with her boss for doing this, but she's trying to help out her friend. And her friend has located the files. She puts all of the shredded documents in a bag and throws them out the window. But she's caught when the Sokolovs, along with a couple of security guards and Alex's mom, walk into the office. And they want to know what the hell she's doing there. Alex's mom thinks it's shady that she was asking about Miranda and now she's been caught snooping around upstairs. She thinks she has Cassie pegged as someone named Victor's spy. But Cassie tells the room, no, I don't know who that is. I'm just a flight attendant. She starts trying to show them her badge, but Alex's mom says, you really don't know what you walked into. Then suddenly, Annie's favor gets called in. And Alex's mom gets told that Cassie truly is just a flight attendant. And Alex's mom tells Cassie, you're free to leave. She rushes out of there, grabs the shredded documents, and grabs Shane. They hop on the train back to the city, and while Shane is sleeping, Cassie gets bored, so she starts looking for a bathroom or, I don't know, maybe a bar cart. But there, standing in the aisle is Miranda Croft. And seeing her face, 
triggers the memory of that night, and she knows immediately, holy shit, that's Miranda. Now, when Megan got back from Rome, we found out what the secret is that she was keeping. Megan has bought some flash drives and is about to commit corporate espionage. She meets with a guy who is setting up the deal, and he tells her just to download the files from her husband's computer and then pass off the flash drives to a guy named Mr. Hawk. And Mr. Hawk doesn't look like he smiles a lot. He's pretty intimidating, and it seems like they want those files pretty quickly, which might be an issue for Megan. She wants to make sure her ass is covered, and he reassures her that his company in Seoul will step in and help her husband if he needs it. And that night, she asks her husband to bring home his work computer so she can use it for eBay, but she downloads those files. And she heads to the drop-off part to drop them off for Hawk, where she calls up Cassie, who doesn't answer, because she wants to hop on a flight route to Seoul next month. So that's the shadiness that Megan's gotten herself into. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. Hit thumbs down if you thought it sucked. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up soon. And please be nice in the comments section. Nobody likes being told they suck, even if it's true. Oh, and you know, sharing's caring.